What's going on, Hobby Lobby? It's your boy, Javier Javier, with the Javier Javier Show. Make sure you say it twice. I'm back with Michael Regilio for a part two. This time, we're going to be focusing on Biden and Trump, and we're going to get into gun control as well. So I hope you enjoyed part one. If you didn't see part one, go back and watch part one. After you watch part two, they can be taken separately. But either way, I hope you enjoy. So stay tuned. All right, folks, this is part two. I'm back here with Michael Regilio, my partner in crime. <laughs> two sides, one coin. What's going on, Michael? <laughs> I am happy to be here, Javier, Javier. Same. Or Javier, Javier, as I heard some people <laughs> like recently. It was, it was killing me, and I just, <laughs> I was like, this David Silverman, I'm not going to correct him. <laughs> yeah. I suspected as much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Javier, Javier. So uh, we left off and we, we talked about a lot on part one um, and the gun issue came up. So I thought that was something that we could talk about from the left and the right perspective. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to gun control, maybe let's, let's put it like this. Is there something on the right like we did on the last part one? Is there something on the right about gun control that you agree with that you could possibly think of that? might be a right-wing talking point or a point that conservatives bring up that you might be sympathetic to, and I'll do the same for the left. Well, the only thing I would say that I'm, I don't know if I'd say I'm sympathetic to it, but uh, as, as a realistic person, I always say, bringing up immigration again, that, you know, when you talk to right-wingers, I always say, no, 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 no. If, if, if a right-winger will say something like, they don't belong here, anyone that's illegal should go home. I go, no, 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 you can't start there. You have to start in reality. You know, we don't know the exact number of people that are in this country that are undocumented, but I've seen figures of 19 million. Some have said 30 million. I, I have no idea, but let's say it's 19 million. These 19 million people in this country working, living with families, they're not going anywhere. You're not, you're not kicking them out. We have to start the solution from here. There are 19 million people here. Where do we go from here? And the same thing is with guns. It's like uh, a left winger might say, oh, they're terrible. Let's get rid of the guns. They, they all got to go. And you go, no, 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 no. <laughs> there's, there's 350 million guns in this country. They're not going anywhere. We have to start from here. So uh, I don't know that I'm sympathetic to no, too many of the talking points on the right, but I will start from the point of there are 350 million guns in this country. We start from here. Let's have a conversation about that. You can't start, and I'm, obviously you're not confiscating 350 million guns. You're not confiscating any guns. I don't think. That doesn't sound reasonable to me either. Yeah. So when it comes to gun control, I think you start from the fact that they're here. They're not going anywhere and you're not taking anyone's guns away. Okay, now where do we go from here? What pragmatic, reasonable legislation can we have? And I'm open to uh, a lot of it. I have ideas. I mean, for one, I think that um, obviously, I think we should start embracing smart technology. I think that the idea that uh, smart locks- Oh, we talked about this. Yeah, yeah. that, that I, I don't know what argument, and again, we talked about this in the last episode, these crazy fantasy talking points that people come back at me at, which is obviously if people don't know, just like unlocking your smartphone, unlocking your gun with your thumbprint or your fingerprint, or it's just as you get your hand around, I'm not, I'm not a gun guy, so I'm not sure how it would work, but yeah. people that are there's, gun there's know a... how it works. The minute you grab the gun, it unlocks and unlocks just for you. So if somebody else gets your gun, it can't work. I don't understand why we can't embrace that. And the arguments I've heard is, well, what if you're on the floor rolling around with somebody fighting over your gun and your girlfriend grabs the gun and she's going to shoot the bad guy, but now she can't because it won't unlock for her. To which I'm like, well, can't we set up a smartphone that it unlocks for multiple fingerprints? Well, no, but what if, what if you're fighting with a guy and a, a, a stranger who's on your side grabs your gun and tries to help you? Then he like, dude, cut. okay, so yeah. what is that? One in a trillion chance? How many times does that happen? Why are we <laughs> what are we talking about? So you know, I would never go that far. I think my only objection to that um, is those type of technologies can fail horribly. Um, like I know there's times where you probably reach for your your smartphone and try to unlock it and it didn't unlock right away or it didn't. No. Well, I've had that problem with my it, it fingerprint. Has, I have the opposite problem, to be honest with you, because sometimes I just want to look at the, the time on my phone, you know? Oh, you got the face recognition thing? 
No, I don't have the face. I still do the thumb thing, but okay. uh, I, I just want to look at the time, which is the locked screen, you know? And I pick it up and it, and it, it gets my thumbprint anyway. And it's like, and it gives me all the apps. I'm like, no, I didn't want to look at the apps. I wanted to see the time and I have to lock it again and, and unlock it with my, with my index finger instead of my thumb because it, you can even get your thumb near that thing and it unlocks. Well, you, got a, you got a great phone because sometimes, I'm, I'll I'm, grab, sometimes I'll grab my phone and if I don't hit it the right way or something, or it just registers it wrong, it won't work. And then I have to right. unlock it with my finger. But really? it, it's, right. here's, here's my phone. Let's see how long it takes to unlock it. Unlocked. Whoop! No, oh. no. It, it was unlocked. It was unlocked, but it just it opened the wrong thing. Oh but no! <laughs> how many okay. times? How many times in a bind do you need your gun to? How long does it take to take off the the lock anyway? Um, a second. Well, I don't. I'm not familiar with the technology, but right. the only the only problem I said like if, if that's not a problem, if that's something they can fix. Um, yeah. I'm all for it. Um, also, okay. some people might make the argument that in a heated situation you might not place your hand in the right way you might yeah. you might panic and you yeah. might <laughs> grab the gun wrong that's like a good thing that a person who's panicked can't fire their gun <laughs> that might be a bad there could be a bad element to a panicked nervous person firing their gun anyway right maybe maybe they need an extra second to think about things yeah i mean they're, they're, look i am for the technology especially if, if if they get it a way that people are reliable and people know that if I grab my gun and it works, it only works for me. I think that's a great thing that nobody's trying to infringe on your Second Amendment rights by implementing that type of um, safety measure. Yeah. I'm but all the for NRA, that. The NRA and other gun lobbies and the Republican Party is completely against the technology. There's also something called micro stamping, uh, which is, again, I don't understand why you wouldn't want this. If you're a legal gun owner, the good guy with a gun, it's just simply that when the hammer comes down, it leaves a, uh, a, an identifiable serial number or mark on the shell casing that then gets ejected from the gun. And so you can trace where the shells came from. You know who fired the shells. There's, well, there, there's two parts to this. Um, I think one is very conspiratorial. I think one is, but there's some truth to it. Um, most people probably feel, especially gun owners feel, I don't want to make it easier for the government to use something against me given a certain circumstance it's conspiratorial in a sense there's this yeah. there's, there's, there's this idea that the government is going to find a way to utilize that in a way to control your gun rights if they needed to um yeah. you know american culture is very like oh if, if we ever have to fight the government or whatever the case may be that, that that goes around i'm not really into that idea for the most part i think most americans are decent people and wouldn't go to war with other americans like not now i don't think the government the u.s military would come and start killing everybody in the country um no. yeah so uh, it's a conspiratorial element to that um very much and then also there are the gun people who probably think well who's to say that the companies who make these guns won't just decide to disable everybody's gun for whatever reason because they can hack into it or something i i, I don't it's it's borderline conspiratorial. I try not to be conspiratorial, but if these technologies right. exist, I am for it. That's something I can one hundred percent agree with you on. Now, my part about what I agree with the left on about gun control is, I think that the left is right to want mental health um, background checks, or you know, in that sense, for anybody to own a gun. And I don't. I think everybody should at least, if you're going to buy a gun, or some sense. I think everybody should at least be, you know, maybe a some way to verify that you're not mentally ill or have mental health history or yeah. something like that. And how to best implement that in a way that won't disenfranchise people who can't afford to do that, that, that would be another conversation that we would have to figure yeah. out. Ah, so when it comes to guns, you want to make sure no one gets disenfranchised. I see. Yeah, I mean, I come from a community of, you know, poverty-stricken people who can't right. afford. I just went and bought a gun. I just went and bought an HK VP9. It cost me 700 something dollars. And then yeah. once you add in the safe and you add in the bullets, the bullets then went up to $35 for the 9 millimeter. Like, once you start to add up the prices of owning a firearm, it's no way somebody that lives in a bad neighborhood who just wants to protect their family can afford it. 
And right, but what about somebody who lives in a bad neighborhood that just wants to feed their family and just can't afford it? Getting back to our last conversation, that where you're, you know, just I'm trying to show you that there might not, there might yeah. be a disparity between your two belief systems when it comes to welfare and and guns. I agree. I'm not saying that we should. Um, I'm not saying that. Well, I, I don't see that as a, a contradiction. I think, uh, for the most part. I'm not saying that people living in poverty should be poor or should have right. to struggle. What I'm saying is we should make sure that we can support them, but to the point where it still incentivizes those people who won't work to find a job or to do something right. that betters themselves because it's better for them and it's better for society. Um, but that's the thing I love about politics. These issues can be broken down on so many levels and just dissect it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's where I'm willing to meet the left. Is yeah. I think make it nearly impossible for people with mental yeah. health problems to actually get a gun. Yeah, and I've thought about this quite a bit. Um, and it seems to me that uh, making, I mean, I'm all for registration and licensing uh, of, of firearms, which, again, it's not something that the, the Republican Party is even willing to talk about, but also training. You just, I, I, you know, a car is always a perfect example. You got to get a license to drive a car. You have to register the car you drive, and you have to prove that you know how to use the car. You have to go and be tested on it. Now, what would be a better way to determine who's mentally capable or who, who seems unbalanced not just your, your previous arrest records or maybe, you know, your previous mental health records, uh, which is what some people are talking about, but let's say that you have to go for training. Who would be better to spot that than the trainer? Now, these are all going to be right. I mean, not all, but, you know, <laughs> that benefits conservatives as well, that these conservatives who are very proud of their guns and very proud of the fact that they know how to use, store, and, uh, you know, a gun. So, who you create a government program just like there's driving instructors and driving tests and whatnot, gun instructors and gun tests, and there's your first line of defense against the mentally ill, is that gun instructor is going to be able to spot the Adam uh, Lanza, was his name, the, the Sandy Hook shooter, it's going yeah. to be able to spot these mentally unstable people when they come in for training. So you, it's kind of win-win for me, everybody. Of course you should be trained on your gun. I, I, it's not enough. I, everybody would agree you should be trained on your gun. Both yes. sides. I, yes. Not everyone's going to agree that you should license and register your gun, so that's a different subject altogether. But everyone's going to agree you should be trained on your gun. And you say that mental health is a big deal. Who better than that instructor? And that instructor, I feel like 80% of the time is going to be a conservative, a right-wing guy who's, who's going to be able to spot these, 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 these dangerous individuals. There's our first line of defense, and I think we align in that way. You say mental health, I say mental health. I say let's make mandatory training before you can get a gun. You have to prove you know how to use it. And then, and therein, you get a first line of defense against the mentally ill. Yeah, um, I, I really, I, I know there are people on the right who might disagree with me, but I think that the, the more, more people who are trained on these weapons, the less incidents that happen, the less school shootings that happen, the better it is for everybody, and also the better it is for the, the gun argument, you know, because then you have, a, you have more of a leg to stand on and say, hey, look, all the shootings are going down. There's not people who's getting these guns who don't know how to use them, accidentally killing the neighbor by accident or whatever the case may be, or shooting themselves. So I think it's better for all of us. And implementation is where we would have to get in the ground and we would have to find out, all right, what's the best way to implement these things? What's the best way for everybody? And that's something we should be talking to our politicians about. Like, hey, we all right. want these things. These are better for everybody. Now let's come to the table, figure out how to work with it. Um, right. So but again, then, the, the proof, by the way, is is the gun manufacturers, which is an incredibly, the weapons manufacturers, a very lucrative business. And again, with that money comes lobbying, and with lobbying comes influence, and with influence comes policy. So you have people making money off of guns that, are, that, that anyone can buy, that you can walk into any store. You know, people talk about the Mexican cartels coming over the border into Texas and buying all these guns and then going to Mexico, which then bolsters these, the, the cartels, which bolsters the drugs coming into America. You could take care of all of that with gun legislation. And unfortunately, we just live in a world right now where the only people who could possibly lead on this issue are Republicans. You're not going to get anything done from the left. You can propose all the bills you want, and they're all going to go down. We need a brave, strong Republican to say, look, we need to have some common sense gun laws. 
and yeah. I'm going to be the one proposing the, 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 so, I mean, the pressure, therefore, Republicans are the, the pressure has to come from the right onto their politicians. I think what's the strongest force working against that is the slippery slope fallacy. There, there, there's this big understanding that, oh, well, if we give them this, then they're going to go further and they're going to go further. And I, in a sense, I don't, there, there's an element of it that I do agree with that, you know, there are other countries who say, all right, we're going to take these guns away from you. And then later on down the line, they say, all right, now we're taking these guns away from you. Or later on down the line, they say, oh, now we're restricting this and we're restricting this. And it just keeps going. You know, the guy in Canada just straight up banned all those guns. It, America's not like that. We don't have the same system they have. But there is a, a level of fear that once you give the government a certain amount of power, they're just going to go even further. The government is very good at just expanding. And I think that's what most people fear because I watch, I watch gun enthusiasts videos all the time. And one of their biggest complaints is, okay, well, we have gun control. We have to get a background check. And they told us that they wanted to do this. And now we're in 2020 and now they're trying to say that we should do this and we should do this and we should do this. What happens in 2030 when they want us to do this and do that? So there are, there are on the other side too though obviously javier where we had an assault weapons ban george w bush let it expire now there's no getting rid of the assault weapon so the slippery slope's going the other way what's next grenade launchers you know i mean the second amendment says <laughs> That's a right valid to point. Bear arms the second amendment says right to bear arms not bear guns when is that argument going to cut when are we going to have that argument at, at the supreme court where somebody's arguing where does it say guns it says right to bear arms. Wouldn't a nuclear bomb count as an arm? I think it might. You know, how about a drone with machine guns mounted on it? Wouldn't that count as arms? Do I not have a constitutional right to that? Yeah, I mean, there's, to there, there's a hypocrisy amendment. there. There's a hypocrisy there because we, we fully understand. Uh, every conservative out there should really understand you can't have what the military has. There, there's no way that we've already we've been past that point of having anything you want muskets we're not talking about muskets and stuff like they were back in the day like mm -hmm. we've already sacrificed a lot on gun control so to act like everything is off the table when we talk about gun control you just i don't think it's reasonable but i do think that we should push back on certain things and you know make sure that it's reasonable things that we're approaching and this is right. why what me and you are doing right now they don't want us to do because as soon as me and you and people like us get together and start sitting down and say, okay, you make a good point there. You know, maybe yeah. we could, and now you get progress. Right. You know, you know I mean, if I, it, it's, a, it's speaking of slippery slopes, bringing up the second amendment uh, is a slippery slope with shouting match, but uh, I'll bring it up <laughs> anyway. it's a sloppy, it's the sloppiest amendment ever, which is why I always say, I believe in your right to own guns, not arms. We should, we should do away with the Second Amendment and write one into law that guarantees you the right to guns. Because the Second Amendment, just like somebody could get up and say right to bear arms, somebody could just as easily get up and say, hey, look at this, that's a qualifier at the beginning. Uh, the security of a free state being, uh, or a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state. Okay, now we got to talk about what, what did they mean when they said militias? We didn't have a standing army at that time, and the militias were government run. Each town had their own uh, militias that would marshal in the town square in times of need. That no longer applies. I always use the example of what if there was an amendment that said, you know, being that uh, in order to stay clean and healthy, people have to bathe in streams and lakes, therefore the right to appear nude in public shall not be infringed. And I think it would be right-wingers would be the first ones to go, whoa, whoa, that no longer applies. We have showers and bathtubs. Like, <laughs> I, that guy at the, at the bus station has got to put on some pants, you know? Yeah. But you could make the same argument that the first, the, the first part of the Second Amendment no longer applies. So it's to everyone's advantage that we take a look at the Second Amendment and go, what a sloppy amendment. You could just as easily say the well-regulated militia and the security of a free state no longer applies. Or you could just as easily, on the right, make an argument that says, the right to bear arms does not specifically say guns, so why can't I have my grenade launcher or whatnot? It's, we're open yeah. to so many interpretations with this sloppily, poorly written amendment that I think we should do away with it and write a new amendment into the Constitution that guarantees Americans the right to have guns. You know what I mean? I get but, you.
I can I can imagine a hundred years from now, right? <laughs> Two guys like me and you are, are saying we need to change the Second Amendment to, from guns to lasers or some yeah, of course, futuristic stuff, right? But it's a living, breathing document. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be amendment. It's supposed to be changed and altered for the times if right. it no longer applies. And the day will come when guns will not be the preferred weapon of anybody. You know, it won't be guns anymore. And then somebody's going to make that argument that it doesn't say guns. It says arms. Maybe we should, for once in the history of this country, nip a problem in the bud before it gets here. You know? Who can say germ warfare isn't an arm, you know? Who's to say chemical weapons aren't, wouldn't count as arms, you know? True that. True that. So let's get into the conversation about... Um, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Um, I think this everybody should be talking about it. We know November's right around the corner. Um, it's a lot going on. And I know where you stand. Um, and lately I've been on the fence about what I actually wanted to do. And I would say, I'll be honest, in the last two weeks, I've been pro-Trump. I, I, I've gone back to being 100% pro-Trump. And Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so to have an honest conversation about it. Uh, I heard you talk with David Silverman with you and David Smalley. Um, I mm -hmm. had a conversation with David, um, as you know. Mm -hmm. And these riots, man, these these, these riots, look, I, I'm having a hard time just I, I don't feel like these riots are helping anybody. No, they're not. It's making it, it look. It, whatever the politics are, when when you start burning stuff down, people get afraid, and then they're naturally going to go to the side that says, "I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to be the law and order president," as Donald Trump says. And I understand the sympathy on why people will find that appealing. Now, where uh, where do you stand, like? I understand that you know about the Black Lives Matter movement, um, Antifa, and what's going on in the streets. What is your argument right now for Joe Biden? And I, uh, what do you possibly see being accomplished by Joe Biden pre presidency besides the, 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 the more common fact that Donald Trump wouldn't be president? <laughs> well, goddamn, that's a good one. You're starting with a great one. Donald Trump wouldn't be president. But let's stay on topic and say that you, you find the, the, the riots and the burning and the looting, which certainly there's, that is happening. Uh, let's start there. Now, the starting point I have to start from is when people say, you know, I mean, just last night I was on um, Twitter and a guy, I didn't, I'm not sure who he was, but he had a blue check mark and he was pointing at, um, at some, 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 a melee uh, going down somewhere in America. And he's like, look at these Biden supporters. What? Come on, man. <laughs> if I may, let me do my Joe Biden impression from him. Come on, man. But what do you mean? Come on. I mean, Antifa, I mean, Antifa are anarchists. They're certainly not supporting Democrats. They're anarchists. They don't believe in government. So you could say they're left wingers. That's fine. That's fine. But to say that, that these are Biden supporters, that these are troublemakers. They're always going to be troublemakers. And there's troublemakers on the right, too. In fact, the latest uh, study or the latest information coming out of the FBI is that 80% of the arrests were right-wingers going to these protests making trouble. So it, there's trouble on both sides, for one. But when it comes to how is it going to change, everybody points out, I will point it out just so that we can say we said it, that it is laughably stupid that you point at what's going on in Donald Trump's America and you go, look what'll happen if you vote for Joe Biden. What, what do you... No, no, no. When it was Barack Obama, it was his country. He owned it. He owned everything going on in it. But somehow when it's Donald Trump's country, it's Joe Biden's fault that's what's going on. That's ridiculous. I think they're so, making the argument that the, the, the rhetoric on the left is justifying what these people are doing. These people feel okay. emboldened. I think that's what they're saying. And Would I, you not think the rhetoric on the right is, is inflaming these people, though? I, I do. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 was, that was a big thing that like when I, I made an episode about the Kyle Rittenhouse um, situation or whatever, and I just see the rhetoric on both sides is getting very toxic. And it, it like, mm -hmm. it, it's not making it better. Like I, I hear some of the craziest things being said from both sides and I'm like, this, yeah. we, we got to stop this. Like, yeah. yeah. And, but I agree with you. There are a lot of people on the right who are 
feet in the fire and wanting to see more chaos and wanting to get, you know, we're going to have a civil war and we're going to... They want a civil war. I mean, I don't know how a civil war works in a country where every state, even the most red state or the most blue state, was like 40% or 47% one side, 53% the other side. There's no line. There's no Mason-Dixon yeah. line that you can draw where it's like the north and the south. That doesn't exist. But I will say this real quickly because you asked that I think that if Joe Biden were elected, uh, and I think it was Martin Luther King who said riots are the voices of the unheard. And, and that's been the case historically very often. I'm, I'm sure you can understand that during, say, the French Revolution, that the, the monarchy had to come down and, and there was, they were only going to listen to what was happening in the streets when the streets became a problem for them. Uh, so let's say Joe Biden gets elected and he passes a federal use of force mandate and he has a federal policing uh, task force and we, we uh, implement certain federal policies from the top down to all police forces and the Black Lives Matter community who are not violent, uh, despite what people wanna say. I, uh, um, and they say, hey, we got what we wanted. Great, we're going home. Thank you. I That's saw, one scenario. I Donald saw. Trump comes elected and he says, the thugs, the criminals, we're gonna go get them. We're gonna, we got, I'm sending in the troops. You're gonna get more of what we have now when what we have now is under Donald Trump. So I happen to believe that we're gonna get more and worse because now people are going to be really desperate. We got another four years with this guy. I only believe the riots that you say are scaring you and scaring me are going to become worse under a second Trump uh, term than they are under a Biden. I think that a Biden is going to be the, 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 the tamping down of the, of the anger because he's going to listen. He's going to listen. It's a very important I'm a, leader. To I'm a, all right. I think we're going to have to disagree because I Let's think... Do it. I think the moment you inflict violence to get your point across, I think it, it, it teaches a person a lesson like, hey, um, well, if we do this, they have no choice but to listen to us. Right. And the, the fear is that Joe Biden is not strong enough to say no. He's not going to be strong enough to just not give in to the mob, not to give in to the into because like you said the riots and stuff there was riots under obama as well people yeah. say okay well when obama and biden was in office they couldn't stop this either so what right. happens if joe biden right. gets selected he tries to implement these things let's say he does implement these things and another black man get killed by the police officer and then the riots right. start again people are right. afraid right. They Let's say the black man is shot by a police officer and he's immediately suspended from the force. There's a federal inquiry, not a local inquiry. He's not being investigated by his own cronies, his own friends, his own police force. There's a federal uh, investigation into him. He's immediately off the force without pay. And uh, then that I don't think you're going to have the anger. The anger comes from the response. Everybody understands in a country of 350 million people that that somebody's going to get shot it just happens it's just it's, it's the response that angers people well so i, I think I, I would believe you if we didn't have stories like jacob blake or if we didn't have stories where it was clear that the person who got shot was doing something that in most cases would get you shot like you know the sexual assault allegation they call the police on him they came there because he has sexually assaulted someone um you know the the whole scenario and people didn't care people didn't care what the what was going on why the cops were there why you know the the tasers didn't work people said you should tase them and they tried to tase them and it didn't work and there's an argument to be made that the police officers should be better trained um but then that goes into the whole reallocating funds somewhere else and when cops uh -huh. are poorly trained now right okay well, let's start with one thing because you seem to have conflated uh, protesters with rioters. Uh, Joe Biden is listening to the protesters. He's not listening to the rioters. And with protesters comes the people that seize an opportunity. The minute you put the, the protesters on the street, the troublemakers are going to see the opportunity to come in and create the trouble. So Joe Biden is not appealing to the rioters. He is listening to the protesters. So I don't think it's fair for you to say that, for one. And for two, it's, again, when you talk about the training of the cops, why aren't they trained better? Why aren't they trained better? Let's talk about people that require more training than cops. 
uh, hairdressers go to more school to get a license to become a hairdresser to culinary school. You have to go through more to become a licensed chef. Uh, air conditioner repair school is longer than police academy. Why is that? Why is it? And by the way, there is no set time to go to police academy. It's the different. shortest police academy yeah. in uh, America, I think, is eight weeks. I four. I think it's. I think it's actually four weeks in some. Is there a four week one? Unbelievable. I, I think that was the lowest I've heard. Yeah, I'm working on a bit right now where I'm. I I, I said something along the lines of you know, uh, it, 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 you can go to police academy in less amount of time than it takes to watch the movie Police Academy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely tell that joke. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I agree. Like, but that's the thing if police need better training and like you said a federal mandate that police are required to train for a certain period of time and get certain types of training i think i think there are people on the right that agree that there needs to be police reform but if when, when you say defund the police i know it's not abolish the police i know that um but doesn't more training mean more funding more t more paid to train better training uh, well, that's what reef. Well, I mean, when they say uh, what well, the terms I like are reallocate. I, I actually like. Let me make a major concession to you. Conservatives are great at framing things, even if it's dishonest. They know how to frame things. I mean, death panels. Uh, we scared the living crap out of people away from uh, the Affordable Care Act. You know, even though that was not. And defund the police. What are you doing? Come on, man. Another Joe Biden impression. Come on, man. <laughs> Why? Do you, that was a gift. To say defund the police is a gift to Fox News. It's a gift to the Republicans. It's a gift to Donald Trump. If, if you were to frame it in, a, in, in the, the, the best light, I would say help the police. Help the police. Help them do their jobs. Let's, let's, let's make sure that the monies going to them are going to benefit them the best. So uh, when you talk about more monies, I mean, Maybe I don't know, but is can you think of a better use of money than making think, sure that? Yeah, I the, think the, when you talk about the the police are so militarized. I, I think if you take some of the funds from them having freaking tanks and stuff like that, or you know, and move it into training or something like that, then when you say reallocate funds, that's a better way to frame your argument, and that's a better way for people to say, okay, we're we're trying to shift funds around in a way that maybe we do take some of this money away from things that are not necessary and give it to a different service that may be called instead of the police, but also take some of those funds and put it into training, better yeah. training, better recruitment, you know, yeah. I think. We need escalation, de-escalation training, which is the focus of police forces in a number of European countries right now, and they've seen terrific results in it, you know? I mean, how do you de-escalate? Particularly with technology, uh, that de-escalation could go much further than it does. We just had a case here in Los Angeles and uh, the specifics, you know, I think this guy was a gang member. I think there was a gun on hand, but he was on a bicycle and the cops started coming after him because of a bicycle code violation and he rode away. He threw down a package, they saw a gun and they shot him over 20 times or something like that. Hmm. How about we invest in some sort of technology, a facial recognition technology or something like that, where let him ride away, don't shoot him 20 times, and, and we can identify who these people are. We've had that with car chases, where we used to chase people at top speed, and they inevitably would get into an accident and kill people. And so now with police chases in uh, Los Angeles, is they don't accelerate. If you don't accelerate, we won't accelerate. We always hang back. Don't worry. We got the helicopter in the sky. This guy's not going anywhere. We're following him. We're, we're following him from above with drones or helicopters or something like that. Let him get away from the cop cars. Don't make him feel the heat of the cops coming up with uh, sirens ablazing. You know, let's say that Jacob Blake got into his car and drove away and calmed down. And he went to his house later that night with some counselors, people trained in this. And he said, okay, look, man, this is the deal. We need to, we need to arrest you. We're going to do it very peacefully. We're going to do it. You know, how, how would the situation have been different if you let him drive away? You know, his license plate number, he's got the kids in the car. What, what if we come and just get you later? You know, <laughs> I, I think what if we could have disabled the car somehow. What if we had a tech set of technology so that oh, the car yeah. would like Wakanda, like, like, like Black Panther. Not going anywhere. <laughs> Everybody hang back. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Just hang but back. Let's I think the only, I think the only argument is 
what if you let somebody go and then they go off and harm somebody else and victimize somebody else? And I, look, I'm not, I'm not with the antidote evidence, but if you would have caught me at 15 years old in my mindset and I would have got away from the charges that, that the police were coming after me for, and I knew they were coming after me, I probably would have did a whole lot more dumb stuff to get away from them. I probably, I probably would have, you know, stolen a car. I probably would have tried to leave town. Uh, who knows who I would have hurt in the process. Um, the, I'm, I'm not saying that most people will, but I, I'm all I'm for the Yeah. Smarter people than me could probably come up with better solutions than I've just True. suggested. Or at True. least people with a better understanding of the issues than me could come up with a better solution uh, than I've just suggested. I just don't know that, hey, this guy's walking away from me. He could be going for a, a weapon, and he could have been, uh, you know, I mean, so let's shoot him uh, seven times in the back. I, I is, disagree with that, the seven that times. That solution, is that the best solution? Is, can we do better is my question. I don't have the answers, but I'm willing to propose the question, can we do better? And let's sit at the table and figure out what we can do to minimize these things from happening. I am, yeah. I am, I am a hundred percent. And the reason we have this conversation is to clear up. Like you said, sometimes people frame things in a way that may, and, and look, me and you both don't speak for the left and the right. I'm pretty sure there are people on our sides who probably mean something totally different when they say something, but hopefully this is a model for anybody watching this to say, you know what, maybe I should stop and listen to the other person, see what they're saying. Cause maybe we agree on something and we can start there. And yeah. I think this is a good place to leave it off. Um, uh, we, I'm gonna have you back on at some point because I think we got a lot to talk about. And I really do want to get more into Joe Biden and Donald Trump because we didn't really flush out, um, yeah. flush that out. There's a, lot, there's a lot there. There's a lot there and a lot is valid. You know, I, I, I hear a lot of the complaints from the left about Donald Trump and that I want to get into with you. And I think you'd be the perfect guy to talk to about those things. Perfect. But I appreciate having you on, Michael Regilio. You want to plug anything? MichaelRegiliocomedy.com. That's where I do my comedy monologue show. You can see some of my sets. I post most of the podcasts I do with David Smalley and the other podcasts that I've been on in the past. Everything that I'm up to, I post there. If you're interested, pop on by. All right. Sounds great. Thank you so much, brother. It's always a pleasure having you on. And Thank you. go check out Michael Regilio. Thanks for watching to all my subscribers. You know, hit that like button, subscribe. Go check out Michael Regilio. And as always, stay safe out there and have conversations with people you disagree with. Thanks Thank again, you. brother. <laughs> Say it Peace. twice. Say it twice. We out.